proposition by the Fitness Business Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Pellegrino. The value proposition was created specifically for industry suppliers to showcase the value that they bring to health club owners and operators beyond their product or service. Today, we have a very special episode for you. We're going to be hearing from three members of the URSA team to learn how URSA has continued to fight for our industry, now maybe more than ever, what's new with their membership options, and why the annual trade show in October is a cannot miss event. Joining us today, we have Brent Darden, Interim President and CEO. Hello, everybody. Nicole Johnson, Director of U.S. Club Membership. Hello, everyone. And Luca Blondi, Trade Show Manager. Hello. Thanks for having me, Sarah. Absolutely. Thanks for being here, all three of you. Now, Brent is going to start us off today with our three real minutes, or three RM, as we like to say, to give you some background on URSA, past and present. And Brent, I wanted to start off just with a huge thank you to you. You have stepped into this role so beautifully at such a critical time for the industry, your take fives, your leadership, everything has just been above and beyond. So on behalf of myself, Fitness Business Podcast, and the industry as a whole, thank you so much, sir, and welcome to the value proposition. Well, yeah, thanks, Sarah. Very kind of you. Uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure for sure. So uh, it's been enjoyable, but I am ready to step back into my more relaxed life, as I say. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, Brent, for those new to the industry, can you give us some context about URSA? How was it created and how long have they been championing for the fitness industry? Well, so this is actually URSA's 40th anniversary. So yet another reason to show up for this year's convention and trade show because it's going to be celebrating and having a look back at sort of the history of URSA and where it's been and, and where it's headed into the future as well. So it's been around for 40 years and the impetus of it in the beginning is still reflective in its name, uh, which many of us have thought about, well, we re really need to update the name of URSA. Uh, what does that really stand for? So a few people can really even remember exactly what those letters mean, the International Health Racket and Sports Club Association. So that really is a, kind of a, pays homage to the impetus for creating the association. It's earliest days around racket sports, both tennis and racquetball. Uh, later, the health part was added, and that's where we got to the, the name that we have today. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And, you know, we know URSA to be an association, a trade show, there's an industry trade magazine associated. So what else all makes up URSA as a whole? Yeah, hey, thanks for answering that. It's surprising how to so many people out there, really, when they think of URSA, it is the convention and trade show, and that's the end. That's, the, that's, uh, that's their full experience with us. But URSA has so much to offer, and I, I guess I can capture it most succinctly, Sarah, by just sharing the strategic anchors. That's what we call them internally at URSA. And the strategic anchors that we provide uh, to the association are, of course, advocacy and public promotion. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that, I know, as we continue this segment. Second is research. We do a lot of research on behalf of our industry, uh, some that's on a really broad scale, looking at the economic and health impact of being physically active and healthy, um, and then some that's a little more grassroots and a little more internal looking about what's the member sentiment? What are members wanting? What are they expecting? Are they enjoying their experience with clubs? How might we help clubs improve their, their offering, if you will? The third one is education. Uh, we have a lot of educational resources that we provide. Uh, you mentioned a few of them, the Take Five, the Talks and Takes. There's online resources, webinars, and then, of course, the events that we put on, including the convention and trade show. And then the last one is really as a community leader, particularly a global community leader. Uh, we've added the tagline recently and updated it to say, really, we don't even spell out what URSA means anymore. We say URSA, the Global Health and Fitness Association. So we, uh, we work with about 25 different federations around the world, and we're really excited about the future of that. That's awesome. And Brent, in your eyes, what are the top three benefits of an URSA membership? Wow. Narrowing down to three was probably a challenge. <laughs> uh, I, I would tie it back to the strategic anchors, and if I could maybe answer it in just a little bit of a different way, Sarah. Please do. You know, I think one of the, the greatest value that URSA has that I, I hope 
I've tried to reinforce during my tenure is that URSA really is a nonprofit trade association. And so when you think about, oh, I may go to club industry, which is great. They offer a great program or club solutions event. That's fine too. That's great. Or uh, any other type of event or educational opportunity or trade show, they can all be beneficial and fruitful. But the URSA organization, really, their entire purpose is to serve the industry. And as a nonprofit, it funnels any monies that are earned back into helping the association grow. And the evidence of that that really came to bear through the pandemic, which we're all so familiar with, we were so frustrated, right, by being lumped in with casinos, bars, restaurants, and deemed non-essential. And, you know, that really hurt us all because we're so passionate about helping other people and we're feeling like we're part of the solution. You know, how in the world can you make us non-essential when we know that being active and healthy and fit protects you against COVID, helps you recover from COVID, diminishes the consequences of COVID. It just doesn't make sense to us. And part of our issue has been that we don't have the participation of clubs at the level that we need to have this united voice with the governments and the elected officials that we want. So when I when you ask me what's the real value of Versa, I wish people would really embrace the concept that you you it's the right thing to do to belong to Ursa. Even if you got very little return. And I think you'll be immensely surprised at the resources we offer. But if you didn't even get any of that, you still should be a member because it's the right thing to do to support the industry on the highest level. That is a fabulous point, Brent. I think we saw this past year more than ever, right? Everyone uniting together, competitors uniting together for, you know, the for the better of the industry. And I think you hit it right on the head. You know, that's what URSA is, and we can continue to have that the more and more people that join. So that's right. a wonderful point. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for running us through the 3RM, Brent. We really appreciate your insight. And we are going to jump right into this conversation. You teed me up perfectly. So with the you know, little name change, it's still URSA, but we're going for the Global Health and Fitness Association. So Brent, what are you all doing internationally to have this new tagline? I know the past year has been just wild, but what does that look like as an, on an international scale? Well, as you referenced already, you know, URSA, the I in URSA stands for international. So on one hand, it's it's nothing new. URSA has been, you know, an international association for quite some time. But we've still really seen, especially over the last year, an exponential growth in our activities internationally and the participation. So just to give you a couple ideas. You know, we launched the Global Health and Fitness Alliance, which is a volunteer group, and we have about 80 individuals that have volunteered to be part of that group from all over the world. And it's very well represented uh, from a lot of the different countries. In addition to that, we have alliances, partnerships, uh, mutual agreements with about 25 different federations that have been formed in other countries around the world that we work with on an ongoing basis as well. And one of the steps we're talking about recently is to multiply our efforts and make them more fruitful is one of the challenges when you try and become a global business entity and you really want to make it available and useful in a bunch of different uh, societies is you've got to have translation, right? So most people don't know that CBI is already translated into Russian. Wow. For example, the whole magazine is translated into Russian and we're, we're striking partnerships. We're launching one with China next week to translate the URSA website into China, not just a landing page or a few specific things, but they're going to have their own newsletter as Brazil has their own newsletter, which goes out in Portuguese. We've established a relationship with a company uh, for Spanish translation of a newsletter and landing pages. So, we're jumping feet first uh, into developing these partnerships, uh, going all in on translating the content that we have, which is where a lot of our international partners view the value of URSA is about the content, right? The education, how, how you run clubs successfully and what is the research and what are, what are other clubs doing that we can learn about from best practice perspective. So there's a few things that are 
that's one of the reasons we're trying to rebrand a little bit and call ourselves the Global Health and Fitness Association, just to make it a little more clear and also get away a little bit from the terms racket and sports club, which I've <laughs> joked about, you know, a little bit. When's the last time you heard sports club in a conversation? Nope. <laughs> Never, right? And the last time we heard gymnasium from uh, President Biden, I think, is like, when is the last time anybody used the whole word gymnasium? <laughs> So uh, that's kind of where the URSA name is. Uh, we're not ashamed of that, and we didn't want to walk away from it because it has so much, uh, I guess, intellectual capital and recognition. Uh, even though people don't un don't know what all those letters mean, they know what URSA means. So we want to do now, Brent. They do they, now. They do now. So yeah, that's the whole impetus behind that. I love it. That's fantastic and so cool to hear about those translations. I know that'll make a huge difference. And so thank you for jumping into that one for us. Now, Brent, we know that URSA fights for the fitness industry as a whole in Washington, specifically all over the world. Um, but we recently have seen a lot about the Gyms Act. So I'm hoping you can walk us through this. And if there is a call to action, what is it for our listeners today? Okay, I'll try and keep this brief uh, and on point <laughs> if I can. It's a big subject. It's the whole time to talk about it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I you know, again, where we started with this, it's important to give just a little bit of context. Uh, our industry was unfortunately left out of the relief packages today, right? Uh, unfortunately, we saw the restaurants get some relief packages. We saw the bars get relief packages. We've even seen the live stages, right? In entertainment, live venues get some relief uh, from the federal government. And the health club industry, health and fitness industry that we represent was left out. Plain and simple. And so we've launched the GEMS Act, and we're gaining a lot of momentum about that. It's about exactly that. It's about getting federal relief in the amount of up to $20 million per club uh, for losses through COVID. Um, and it would be a grant program, not a paid back loan, uh, to help us recover from all the catastrophe that the pandemic waged on our industry. Uh, if you've heard some of the research that we've done effective at the end of December, we know that we lost about 19% of health clubs in the United States. Okay. In some of the other countries, it was even worse. Yeah. Um, some of those numbers in some of the other countries are in the 30s, 35% of health clubs that are not coming back. Mm -hmm. So the, the damage was quite excessive. And the GEMS Act is an opportunity to get some relief from the government. We're trying to put pressure on the elected officials, primarily in the Congress and with the Senate. So I'm excited to say we've now gotten over 130 congressmen to co-sponsor the bill, the GEMS Act. And to give everyone a little perspective, when the restaurant bill uh, relief package was uh, signed off on, they had just over 150 co-sponsors. So we're getting very close to that. And that doesn't guarantee that it will pass, but it puts us in the ballpark of consideration. And now it's been introduced in the Senate and we're getting some really great traction in the Senate as well. We've got bipartisan sponsorship in both the House and the Senate. And so the thing that I would ask everyone to do is if you'll go to ursa.org and click on the link that says GEMS Act or help us save the health and fitness industry, it'll take you to a dashboard and on this dashboard, it's interactive. And all you have to do is put in your name and your address where your club is located. And it'll tell you who your contacts at the House of Representatives are, who your congressmen and women are. And if you'd like to send them an email, you can write your own email by clicking on a link, or we can give you one that's already sort of written and gives you some of the data points that you can share with them to get their attention and sign your name. It'll automatically populate with their address and be sent to them. So that's step one. That's so easy. It takes literally five minutes to do something like that. The next one is a little bit bigger uh, ask, and that is we'd really love it if you'd reach out to your congressman or congresswoman in your district and let them know you'd like their support of the GEMS Act. Many people are really afraid to do that. They think, you know, they're, you know, they're, they have the congressmen and women up on this pedestal and they're afraid they won't get the attention. But the truth is many of them have policies that they have to respond to their constituents, right? Um, so reach out to them, give them a phone call, send them an email, tell them you'd like to set up a meeting with them. If you get one of those meetings scheduled or you have an opportunity to chat with them, you can reach out to Ursa. We'll send you 
more material than you want. So you've got some talking points about the GEMS Act. But uh, it, the other point I just want to make uh, is that it's we're doing everything we can from the association. But the truth is to get co-sponsors requires people in those districts to talk to their representatives. It doesn't do any good from the URSA headquarters in Boston to call, you know, the congressman down in Texas. There's no clout. It's got to be a Texas club operator in Dallas calling the representative that represents Dallas Fort Worth. That's how this works. And so it's really not about fundraising. It's not about money. It's about calling and asking somebody to support our industry. And we can give you all the facts to help you do that. Awesome. Thank you, Brent. You've given us so much to work with. And I have one question for you off of just what you've said. Is this something that only club owners can send emails or vendors, members, anyone that cares about fitness can contact their congressmen and women? Sorry. Absolutely. Both. Yeah. For the email, for sure. Friends, family, mothers, grandmother. I asked my mother-in-law to send one in, right? right. Uh, we've sent over now, I think, 35,000 emails. Uh, and we we're hearing from them that, wow, I'm getting all these emails, which is getting their attention, which is what we want. It is, right? Uh, and talk about if, it. You're, if you're going to have a meeting, you know, you probably need to do a little more research and have a little bit of information to share to make your point. Sure. Awesome. Thank you for clarifying. And that is such wonderful action steps for everyone to take. So if you're listening, ursa.org, right? Send that email, contact your local congressman or woman. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, Brent, I'm going to switch gears just a little bit. Um, we've been hearing also and seeing a lot about the URSA Foundation. So I want to give you an opportunity to touch on what it is and what its mission is. Yeah, well, thanks for putting that on the agenda. Uh, I wasn't sure that was going to be included because a lot of people don't even know that it exists. Yeah. Uh, an interesting tidbit is I actually wrote the first check uh, for the URSA Foundation back when I was on the board of directors some like eight years ago now. So it's really a passion of mine. And the mission of the foundation, which is a 501c3, which means it's a charitable donation if you make donations to the foundation to support that research. But its, it's mission really is to promote health through physical activity. That's it. Uh, we, we do a lot of different research projects and I'll, I'll share a few of those. We're doing one that we're just about to wrap up here this month. We've been working on it for the last couple of years with the Special Olympics about helping clubs become more inclusive uh, for those that are, uh, you know, uh, disabled in some way and have challenges physically where they're not able to do some of the things able-bodied people are able to do. So we're just finishing that up. We're also working with uh, ABC Fitness Solutions and uh, uh, Club Intel on a member sentiment uh, study to find out if you haven't returned back to your gym after post-COVID, now that we're open, what's keeping you from coming back? And what might clubs do to help you return or motivate you to be willing to return back uh, to the fold? So that's really exciting. We're doing another one uh, that's called with our Clearview Insights, and we're coming up with a rallying cry for the industry that hopefully everyone will get behind. But our approach is, of course, we wanted to have a marketing sort of bent, right? It's got to have a little panache to it, but we've taken a more scientific approach to develop it with this company called Clearview Insights, where they're behavioral scientists. And so they're testing messages as we speak in the marketplace to see what really will garner people's attention and make them want to change their behaviors in a positive way. Uh, and so their research is about to come out as well. And that's going to be really insightful again, because one of our great challenges in the industry is reaching the, you know, 80, 75% of the population that don't belong to health clubs. And, and how do we get them to take advantage of all that we have to offer, whether that's in inside our bricks and mortar walls or through our digital offerings. But that's what that research is about. Uh, one more, and then I won't go on and list a bunch more, but one the other one that I think is just really a, top of everyone's mind is we're working on something with the John W. Brick Foundation. A lot of our listeners will know Victor and Lynn Brick, uh, Brick Bodies, and now they own a lot of the Planet Fitness franchises. And they have a foundation that's quite large around mental health. And uh, mental health has become such a concern through the pandemic. 
And we want to make sure that clubs are aware of the challenges of mental health and help them understand how they can be part, again, of the process of helping people become mentally well, uh, both to de-stress and handle addictions and behaviors that they've uh, developed as part of their mental challenge and stress, um, which is so rampant right now. The numbers are staggering about the number of people that are struggling with mental health. So that's an example of some of the research that URSA does. I could go on and name some others, but that, that gives you a glimpse. There's more research going on in the URSA Foundation right now than in the last 10 years combined. So we're, we're really proud of that. I, that is such a great view into, and thank you so much for the examples, Brent, because it's so easy to be like, yep, the URSA Foundation, yep, but to really drill down and hear what you all are working on is so fascinating. I'd like to keep up with you on that. Maybe we can share that on Fitness Business Podcast. What's, what's URSA researching this month? Because I think that's so interesting. So thank, thank you very much. Um, we're going to switch gears here a little bit, Brent. So for your last two, I want you, we've talked about globally how URSA is making a huge impact in the industry, um, what they're doing for the industry as a whole. I want to drill this down, right? If someone, you know, for the Fitness Business Podcast, we have club owners, operators, managers, directors listening, tuning in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if one of them is listening and going, that's all fantastic but how does URSA help me as a club owner or a club chain operator rebound from the past year? Do you have just a few, just one, two, three, this is what we're going to help you do. Yep. I'll give you one, two, three. Uh, number <laughs> one, uh, I'll try and keep it to that. Number one is we have a toolkit about reopening. So if you're coming out of the pandemic and you're, you're trying to reopen and you're trying to bring those members back into your clubs, uh, we've got a toolkit that's been designed to kind of walk you through that and share some best practices. So that would be one. Uh, number two, uh, in the next two weeks, we're going to be launching for the first time a very comprehensive best practices in the industry about operating health clubs, uh, of course, post-COVID. Mm -hmm. Number three, by in the next two weeks, we're also launching a training video that we've developed about enhancing the member experience in a post-COVID world. So we got a lot of traction, or URSA did, on a member experience video sort of training tool that was very, you know, had some role-playing, role if you will, actually inside clubs, you know, at front desk and modeling behaviors and communications. Uh, I think that was done back in the John McCarthy days. So that's been a while. Well, you know, my good friend Chris Stevenson and Marissa Hoff have been working with us on that, and that'll be coming out uh, here in the next couple of weeks. So there's three very relevant, very current uh, tools. And then, of course, there's, as I mentioned before, there's, I think we were looking at, when we talked about translation, uh, I don't want to get this wrong, but I think we decided there were 3,100 pages on the URSA website. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So we decided we can't translate all of those. We got to we got to pick and choose which ones we want to translate. There's a lot of resources there for everybody. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Brent. That really it gives them a good, you know, a good idea of what they're going to get and Chris and Marissa are such good friends of the podcast too. So we know that's right. going to be valuable information for you. All right, last one for you, Brent, for right now. We'll come back, but um, you know, you just mentioned a partnership with ABC Fitness Solutions and Club Intel based on more research and data. Is there anything else that URSA is doing to really support vendors and in, in preparation for this year's trade show or just in general? Well, you really got some really great questions, Sarah. Um, and they're, I'm a they're vendor very... podcast. I had to ask that one. I had to. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. The, another thing we're just really so pleased with, uh, Sarah, because when when I stepped in, because of the cancellation of the convention and trade show last year and the pandemic, um, you know, we were in a bad place, to be frank, with a lot of the suppliers because uh, we weren't able to refund their monies. It just wasn't physically, financially possible. And we had a big town hall meeting and I shared that message with all of them. And most of them have been so gracious uh, about allowing us to extend them credits going forward. Uh, so that's number one. Uh, but we realized too, from feedback from that town hall, we put together a headlight team and you probably heard those words before. 
of some of the top suppliers in the industry that would give us feedback. So we put the team together and we said, how can we improve our relationship with the vendors and suppliers? What does that look like to you? What would you like to see from URSA? How can we get you more involved? And so we did that. And then more importantly, we listened. So the first thing we've done is we've changed their title from an associate member of URSA to an industry partner. Uh, on the website and in their membership categories and everything else. Second, we just we developed now what we have in place is an industry partner advisory council. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, I believe it's 10 members uh, that were nominated, uh, ap applied, and voted on by the URSA Board of Directors. We've had three meetings now, and they've all been fabulously productive. And so they, they have a vehicle to give us feedback and help us also disseminate and communicate information. And we've come so far, just the fact that we're communicating on a really regular basis. We, when we first you know, launched the advisory council, for example, we said in the material, we said, oh, we're gonna meet probably once a quarter. That's the plan. So if you'll volunteer, you know, we'd like to get some feedback. Well, we had one meeting and then we decided, okay, we gotta meet next month. And then we decided, okay, we gotta meet next month. So this whole plan of four meetings a year is turned into one every month and they're enjoying it. We're enjoying it. And more importantly, it's really benefiting URSA. So, um, you know, it's a shame that we didn't get more connected with them because they're such a big part of our industry and, and going forward, this council is going to ensure that we're including them when we're, when we're advocating for relief, we should be advocating it, not just for clubs, but also for suppliers who are also hurt. Um, and when we talk about the convention and trade show, it is really, it's the convention, which is the education, but it's also the trade show. And the vendors have some pretty strong opinions about, you know, return on their investment at the trade show. And so letting them tell us what will help them get a greater return and how can we make that experience better for them. Uh, you know, again, it's just been really fruitful and there's a great group on there. And then the final thing I would just say is, you know, it's been really, uh, you know, really encouraging to see these suppliers who could have been angry with URSA and perhaps at one point were, uh, but uh, unabashedly now would say, we love URSA, we need URSA. It's a big part of our opportunity to share our products and services with the club operators. Some of them, uh, at least a few of them said, no, this is a Super Bowl event for us of the year. We go to lots of other shows, but this is the big deal. And so we have a vested interest because as the club industry goes, so do we go. And of course there are a few and you and I both know somebody pretty close to us that has done well, his company's done pretty well as far as the home market and other segments, but the club operation segment, the commercial health club segment is still a really large piece of their business. So. That's awesome. I can speak from the vendor side that yes, URSA is the Super Bowl. Every year our Super Bowl was in March. <laughs> Yes. This year it's different, but you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, Brent, thank you so much. I have just learned new things. So I know our listeners just took in so much knowledge and learned so much from you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Nicole, we're coming to you for all things membership. Are you ready? Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So can you first give our listeners an idea of who can become an URSA member? And what I mean by that is, can Sarah Pellegrino just sign up to be an URSA member or do I have to own a club to do so? Sure, no problem, Sarah. But first, let me thank you again for the opportunity to share URSA's membership with your audience. Because URSA is a trade association for the global health and fitness industry, our members represent a wide spectrum of businesses and business models, ranging from health clubs to boutique studios to spas, country clubs, and franchise clubs. Anyone who provides a service or product typically joins as an industry partner, as mentioned earlier. We also have memberships for people like yourself, fitness professionals that may not be associated with a club at this time, or they've been furloughed, uh, retirees can join as a fitness professional as well. And then we also offer those who are preparing to develop new clubs within the market. So we have lots of options. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. And that's what we're doing next, Nicole. We're going to dive right into those options. I know that you all have made some changes to membership tiers and options. So I would love for you to walk us through those changes and maybe just a little background on how you came up with some of them. 
Sure, no problem. Over the past year, we've restructured our membership to be more inclusive and flexible to make joining easier. The way that our process is basically, you know, we have a lot of member research that we've done over the years, and we collaborated with a team of industry leaders to help successfully develop and broaden our membership opportunities to unite the industry. The changes will provide easy access, like I mentioned, allow members to engage in a way that best suits them. As Brent has mentioned, our industry was hit hard from the pandemic. So we want to really make it affordable and easy to access and to connect and network with each other and rebuild the new relationships and rebuild relationships in the past. So in April, we moved to a tiered membership structure for health clubs and studios. And uh, basically, I can take you through what that is. It basically is three levels of membership that people can choose from, basic, standard, and premium. And basically, that gives them access to benefits. The benefits increase based on the level of choice. So if you choose a basic membership, for example, that's more ideal for companies that want to belong to URSA's community, engage in the industry best practices, and have a limited access to industry insights. The standard membership is pretty much the most popular membership. It's designed for companies who want to upskill their team, access data-driven research, and build stronger business relationships. And the premium membership is really targeted to operators who want to lead their companies and the industry to the highest level of success. Members will have access to exclusive insight, research, and networking opportunities. This membership is really ideal for those looking to have greater involvement in public affairs and have a passion to improve the industry's image as a whole. That is awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, just to add, we did also add a professional membership, which provides, like I mentioned, retired owners, people in the in medical profession who want to learn more about the fitness industry, sure. investors, fitness professionals that may have been furloughed or are in between jobs. It gives them a way to connect and access industry resources and build their networks. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Nicole, for walking us through those options. I do love to hear the mention of the boutiques. You know, that is really because to Brent's point, you know, the racket and sports club, like I just, I love that that has really made the transition as the industry has shifted. So we love to see all types of clubs and fitness centers joining. So thank you for walking us through that. And Nicole, you and I spoke earlier this week about the NHFA and how URSA Jews support this. So I want to see if you can give us a deep dive into and tell our listeners a little bit more about where their dues are going. Absolutely. So membership dues, all membership dues for the U.S. Mm-hmm. will have a percentage of their dues going toward the National Health and Fitness Alliance, what we call NHFA, uh, for those of us who are familiar with it. And like Brent said, it was created to unite advocacy, public relations, and lobbying efforts of the health and fitness industry in the U.S. To give you more of an example of how that is sorted out, so standard is 50% of your dues will go to fund and support the National Health and Fitness Alliance, whereas premium dues will go, 75% of those dues will support the National Fitness Alliance. So as your listeners choose which membership they want, just keep that in mind. And if I could, Sarah, one other thing that it just came to me is the 1% that, again, Brent mentioned the URSA Foundation. And we are really excited as, you know, just to have 1% of all revenues of URSA will be able to go fund that and all those research products. Thank you for that. I think that's so interesting hearing the numbers and where the funds are going because that just gives us a better look into URSA and what you all do. So thank you so much, Nicole. Now, we are on the value proposition. Brent got a similar question. So this is yours. In your eyes, Nicole, what is the value to being an URSA member? Well, in my 23 years at URSA and as an association professional, I realized that the decision to join a trade association varies. For our discussion today, I'll try to keep it simple and narrow it to just three that I believe are the most important reasons to join URSA. Number one, By joining URSA, your listeners will be able to connect to fitness industry's most robust collection of data, best practices, 
that are needed to move the industry forward. They'll have access to programs like our active and safe commitment that will help reaffirm the industry's dedication to safety. And they'll enjoy deep discounts on training resources, products, and events like the URSA convention that's going to take place in October. Number two, I would say, is becoming a member of URSA will help lift the voice of the industry as a whole and protect it from harmful legislation. I think Brent, again, mentioned this earlier, advocacy is one of the key things of why a trade association is formed in the first place. So what my number three is, you know, it is the right thing to do. And if you belong to the fitness industry, you should belong to your trade association. That is awesome. I can firsthand, I can speak to the research and the data side of URSA. I was an intern at URSA eight years ago. Today, Nicole, I started my internship eight years ago. It came up on my Facebook memory that June 3rd was my first day as an URSA intern in 2013, which is just wild to me. Um, But I worked in research and um, specifically to the European fitness market. So really cool. I know the numbers. I know the data that URSA has and puts out to the industry. So thank you for hitting on that, Brent. Thank you for hitting on that too, because that is such an important piece. Really cool. All right, Nicole. So if one of our listeners want in either a club owner, vendor, industry professional, regardless of who they are, they want to join URSA, how do they go about doing so? Well, that's an easy answer, uh, Sarah. <laughs> they simply go to ursa.org backslash membership to join online, or they can email membership at ursa.org, or they can reach out to me, nj at ursa.org. Beautiful. Or they can come right to you. I like it. All right. We're sending you all to ursa.org for many reasons. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) I love it. Thank you so, so much, Nicole. We appreciate your insights and updates from the membership side of URSA. Luke, my friend, we're coming to you. I know that people are just like, all right, it's, It's almost October now that it's June and we want to know about the trade show. So you are the master of all things trade show related. So I would love for you to tell us about this year's trade show. Where and when will URSA 2021 be? So uh, definitely get out the planners or the cell phones or whatever you're using nowadays to save the dates. But uh, URSA 2021 is finally going to be held October 13th to the 15th. Uh, K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center in Dallas, Texas. Awesome. The trade show portion is Thursday and Friday, the 14th and the 15th, 10 to 6 and 10 to 4. And there's also an early morning workout from 6.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. on Friday. And um, honestly, we just can't wait to have the show and see everybody again. And October cannot come soon enough. The countdown is on. It is on. (laughs) Are you sleeping? (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. 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 All right. Well, besides the location and the time of year, Luke, is there anything above it just super different about this year's trade show that we can expect and or look forward to? Yes, Sarah. I think honestly, the biggest difference is that there wasn't an Ursa show last year. So You have companies that haven't had a chance to showcase any new products at URSA in almost two years. And you even have startups that had to delay their launch um, due to the circumstances. So it's definitely going to be exciting for them and for the attendees. Uh, We're also definitely seeing some accelerations of some of the trends that were developing before COVID, um, such as products tailored to help clubs monetize uh, virtual fitness and training and integrate into their existing profit centers. But honestly, bottom line is I just think there's a special excitement this year, and it's just one more step towards our industry recovering. Um, New exhibitors have been signing on every day, and honestly, the past like three to four weeks, it's really been picking up, and everybody seems to be really excited, and I just think it's going to be a great show in Dallas. That's so cool. Look, and are you seeing, I love to hear that companies are signing up to attend, sh- signing up to be, you know, exhibitors. Are you seeing any cool and new companies that were developed maybe in 2020 because of the needs of the industry or because of the pandemic? I would say certainly 
where in development may be before it and shifted a little bit. Yeah, there's certainly companies that may fit that. Wonderful. Luke, why should owners, especially in the U.S., make it a priority to attend this year? Yeah, so as um, Brent mentioned before, this is URSA's 40th anniversary trade show. And I don't think it's exactly the circumstances we expected when we uh, circled it on our calendars a few years back. But uh, it's still a celebration. I just think it's a different type of one. Yeah. Um, I think it's the beginning of the road to recovery for our industry. And uh, with people starting to get back to the gyms and gyms being allowed to open at full capacity, there's going to be an opportunity to gain a lot of members. And uh, the clubs that are the most prepared and educated and know about the latest products and services, they're going to be the most successful at it. So I think the trade show is a great place to see all of these great products, services, and find ways to help your club grab and retain these members. And the education and networking is going to help them plan the road to recovery. So I honestly think a lot of clubs are going to use Ursa 2021 as a tool to inform their buying decisions for the next year. So I really think it's important for suppliers to be there as well. Yeah. Um, after the year we've had, October is honestly a great time to come together as an industry, whether that's business partners, friends, former colleagues, suppliers, even competitors. Yeah. Um, COVID's a reminder that our industry needs to collaborate and advocate more and not just during a crisis. Yeah. 100%. That's awesome, Luke. And, you know, can you, are there, is there anything different? Maybe we've talked about trade show. We know there's a lot of great companies coming. Um, talk to us a little bit about the education piece. Is that going to look any different or is there a session that you're just really excited about? Like what's going on? Yeah. So, um, we haven't released the full agenda, so I can't okay. get into two specifics. I don't want to get in trouble here. But, you let um, me know when that's out. <laughs> we're going to share it for you. That's exciting. Absolutely. I can give a few teasers, though, because we're definitely okay. looking to provide some fresh content. And I think we have some stuff that attendees are going to find very valuable and new. Um, so we're going to do some TED Talk style presentations, which I know are very popular. Um, there will be a live version of Talks and Takes. Um, we're adding a studio education track, which kind of goes along with some of the new membership options to cater to different groups. Um, we're also doing a pre-con with MedFit that's focused on medical fitness. Um, there'll be some speakers from outside the industry a little more yeah. just to try and get those differing viewpoints, especially during everything that's going on. And we'll do skill workshops, poster presentations, and there will be a, some sort of hybrid component. Um, so lots of stuff. Uh, schedule is going to be announced later this month, so definitely stay tuned. You had me at TED Talks, so this is right. Great. It's a it's a buzzword for sure. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. All right, Luke. Now you have a trade show coming up after a year of not having it there's a lot of new things going on what is the number one thing you are most looking forward to for this year's trade show yeah so sarah honestly i i would probably have to just say the energy like i miss the excitement of watching the exhibits go up and seeing the hall go from just a bare concrete slab to this super vibrant space with music and salespeople and business and honestly, my role at URSA, it's a super busy, stressful time for me, but I miss it very much and I cannot wait to get back. So honestly, the trade show doors opening at 10 a.m. Thursday and seeing people pour in and get to touch products and talk face to face and try things out. I just think it's really important for us as an industry and just in general to, you know, return to normalcy. And uh, I also look forward to the early morning workout, which is 6.30 a.m. on Friday, where attendees can really put the new equipment through the paces and get a sweat on. I cannot. I'll be in a suit, but I'll be supervising. <laughs> that's awesome. That is so fun, Luke. We, that's, it, you hit the nail on the head. We, are, uh, we're, we miss our Super Bowl, right? It's time yes, to get we do. back. That's so awesome. Awesome. There's well, no losers you. at this Super Bowl, though. <laughs> You're all winners. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Luke. We appreciate your insight into the trade show and keep me posted 
Um, we'll send some up, like I said, we'll send updates out for you. And um, as people start registering, we'll, we'll keep the buzz going for you, okay? Will do, thank you for having me. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, thank you to all our panelists today. And I want to give you all a final word here. So Nicole, I'm gonna come back to you, my friend. Um, any, you know, someone's listening today, closing remark, what is one reason uh, that they should become an URSA member? Go. <laughs> um, if you want to grow your business, grow professionally, uh, it's, or do right by your employees, join URSA. Love it. Love it. Love it. Luke, how about you? So... I have sort of a similar thought. The two words that came to mind for me were exposure and growth, um, particularly for suppliers. Some of the most well-known brands in the industry got their start for showing their products at URSA. So URSA is uniquely positioned to help you grow your business with health clubs and the industry partner membership really gives you the tools to get started doing that. So good, I love that. Mr. Darden, how about you? Well, I'm going to take Luke. Uh, I'm going to take Luke's lead and give you two words. And my words are gratitude and responsibility. So, gratitude first for, as you mentioned, the leaders that stepped up. I call them uh, kind of affectionately the top 100. But I mentioned the headlight teams earlier, and we have really it's right at about 100 industry leaders that volunteered Yay. their time and their talent to help us accomplish a lot of things we've talked about today. Uh, and I couldn't thank them more, right? We'd know a lot of those names. I could list them all out, but it wouldn't be fair to list some and not others. But uh, they knew who, they know who they are, and they did an awesome job. Uh, and also, I'd like to uh, recognize the URSA staff. Much like many of the clubs, you know, had cutbacks to help URSA survive financially. We had to make some really painful decisions over the course of the last year. Uh, we downsized our corporate office space significantly. We reduced staff by over 55%. Um, so when you hear all the things that URSA has accomplished this last year, understand that it's done with less than half of the people that were there the year before. Uh, so, you know, to pick up those pieces and be resilient like the URSA staff has has just been phenomenal. And the responsibility part is, as I touched on before, and Nicole echoed it a little bit, is, uh, you know, we need everybody to be responsible and continue supporting your trade association going forward. Hopefully that's through membership. We hope you'll support the GEMS Act. We hope you'll support the NHFA into the future. And on an immediate basis, we hope you'll come out and be part of the celebration in October in Dallas. Uh, again, it's, uh, it's not just a for-profit educational thing. It's an investment in the industry when you show up and those monies are used to help us, you know, fight the Jim's Act war. And uh, those things take money. And that's a, a way that we generate funds to support all of our research and everything that we do. So that's thank you for sense. having us, Sarah, and giving us this platform. It's very nice of you. Thank you all so much. Thank you for your kind words and a lot of action items coming out of this episode. So thank you three for the value that you have shared with our listeners in the industry on today's episode. So thank you all so much for tuning in today to hear the value proposition for industry associations. Tune in Friday, July 16th for our next episode. And to show we walk the talk at the Fitness Business Podcast, all the resources and links, especially ursa.org from today's show can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com adding value to our FBP family. Until next month, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. See you next month, FBP family. Bye.